G'day folks and welcome to another tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be programming the C++ front end that we went through last shoot. Okay, so I've got a um, Visual Studio 2010 open here. What we want to do is go File, New, and Project. And this time instead of an empty project we want to select um, CLR, Windows Forms application. And get rid of the name here, maybe we'll call it um, Image Proc Shoot something like that, then click OK and uh, Windows will give us a form a bunch of headers and uh, things like that over the side so the first thing that I like to do is uh, change the font size, I, I can't stand looking at tiny fonts so if we right click on uh, the form and open up the properties box uh, your properties box might be docked to the uh, right or left I like to float mine Anyway, go to the font and change it to 12. Unless you like small fonts, then you can keep it the same. I don't mind. Um, alrighty, we might change the name of our form, the title up here. So, um, open up your properties box again and slide down. We'll see um, one of the items is text. So we'll change that to maybe image proc shoot. Just to be nice and professional. Alright, I do want to mention also that um, by default I think the properties are sorted uh, with categorized. These little buttons up here change the uh, sorting method. I like to sort mine by alphabetical. Okay. Alright. Um, we'll get our toolbox open. So if you can't see your toolbox, um, there's a button up here with a hammer and a spanner on it to uh, show or hide your toolbox and again just something that I like to do is uh, dock my toolbox to the uh, left you can put it anywhere you like now I'm not sure what it opens up to by de default I think it might be common controls but uh, I like to open it up to uh, all Windows Forms controls and uh, the first control that we're going to add is a uh, menu strip so scroll down a bit you'll find menu strip uh, just grab that drag it over to your form and release. Menu strip 1 is good enough name for us. Then we click on the uh, menu strip that we've just added up the top and we go um, ampersand file. This is going to mean that we can uh, hit Alt F to open this up as a uh, shortcut key. We can open up our file menu as a shortcut key. And a couple of menu items that we'll add is uh, ampersand O P E N. So we can hit um, Alt F O to get a file open. And the other one that I want to add is E ampersand XIT, which will be our uh, exit. So even though we've turned the form to a uh, 12 point font, for some reason the uh, menu control will have its own font and uh, own font size. So I like to uh, change that to 12 point and uh, sans serif. So I'm going to do that now. Okay, that's better. Alright, now the next control that we'll add is the picture box. Uh, just grab the picture box, drag it, drag it over to your form, and uh, we'll resize that to be about the same size as our form, maybe a bit, uh, bit shorter. And we're going to anchor this so that if the user resizes the form, the picture box resizes as well. So we right click and we go properties and uh, you'll find anchor and it'll be on top left at the moment. We want to anchor it to all sides so uh, check each of those so that they're all grey. That way when the user resizes the form, our picture box will resize as well. Okay, I also like to rename everything. Uh, my controls, I have a little naming convention which starts with a three letter abbreviation three or four letter abbreviation followed by what the uh, control does so I'm going to call this picture box PIC image alrighty just a little convention there and if we scroll down we'll see um, where is it size mode um, when the user resizes the form we're going to want our uh, image to be nice and clear we want it to zoom but we don't want it to stretch like we don't want um, 
yeah, our image to look really tall or squashed or anything. So for size mode, we'll choose um, zoom. Okay, and that's probably about enough for our picture box. If we scroll uh, down in our tools, we'll find near the bottom somewhere um, the track bar tool. This is what we'll use for our um, brightness adjustment. Drag one of those down to the bottom of your form and resize it so that it's almost over the uh, right hand side. And I'm going to rename this track bar um, TRK brightness since it's a track bar and it's adjusting the brightness. Okay, the other thing that we've got to do is set the uh, very left hand side to negative 255. We've got to set the right hand side to 255 and then we've got to make sure that the pointer starts in the middle, so at zero. Um, you'll see the properties minimum, maximum, and right down the bottom is uh, value. So value should be on zero already. But uh, the maximum that we just said is 255. So put that in, and the minimum is negative 255. And we hit enter. Okay, so the graticules down the bottom of the track bar are starting to look a bit silly. So we'll change that. We'll, um, I think it's tick frequency somewhere. You'll see the property tick frequency right here. At the moment it's 1. So uh, it's putting about 512 little graticules along the bottom. Pretty silly really. So we'll change that to 16 just to make it look a bit better. Okay. That's good. And the other control that we want to add is a, uh, a label. And we'll drag that down and put it beside our track bar. And initially, we'll set the text of that label to maybe C++ average and a colon. Okay, it doesn't quite fit on, so we'll just uh, shorten our track bar a bit. Move that across a bit. Okay, so when we're changing the track bar, um, we want to get the average time that it's taking um, C++ to process the image and update the brightness just so that we can later compare that to assembly and uh, yeah, hopefully get a meaningful comparison so I'll also change the name of that label I'll change it to um, LBLCPP average since uh, it's a label and it's representing the C++ average and the other thing that we want to do is uh, dock these controls so LBLCPP average I'll dock to the bottom right go and TRK brightness I'll dock to the bottom three so we want it to stretch um, horizontally but we want it to stick to the bottom of the form alrighty that's good let's see how we're going we'll hit uh, F5 to test our program out alright it's looking pretty good Okay, so one of the first things that we should do is uh, change our program to 64-bit. So we go up to the Configuration Manager and go into Platform and find uh, New. Everything should be set up here already. In New Platform we want to select X64 and Copy Settings from Win32 and Create New Solution Platforms can be checked as well. So that's all good. We click Close. And if we right click over here in our Solution Explorer on our Solution and we click Build Customizations, this will be for later really, but um, it's the same as before. We're just adding the um, Macro Assembler uh, Build Customization, so check that box and click OK. And the other thing that we want to do is initially uh, disable this track bar. We don't want the user sliding the track bar around when there's no image loaded. So if we right click on track bar, we open up the properties again, we'll find uh, enabled somewhere near the top, there it is, and it'll be set to true, so we just want to change that to false. I'll file save that. Okay, um, the first thing that we'll add is uh, just a little a way to exit, so if you go to your file menu and double click on the exit item, uh, Visual Studio will take you straight to the code for that event. Let me just 
I don't like the way that it uh, tabs things out. I prefer this way. I think it's much more readable, but you know, tabbing is <laughs> an endless argument, so tab however you like. Anyway, all we want to do when they click on exit is say application exit. Alrighty, so that's going to mean that they can hit uh, Alt F and X to exit, or they can go through the file menu and exit. Let's hit F5 and see if it all goes. Okay, that's good. Our trackbar is disabled. And file exit. Beautiful. Okay, let me just see how we're going for time. Yep, we're going good. Alrighty, so the next thing that we're going to do is um, open up a file when they click File Open. This is going to be an image file. Um, okay, so the first thing that we can do is uh, add a uh, file browser dialog. What do they call this? Uh, open file dialog. Right there. Um, okay, so grab an open file dialog and drop it onto your form. I'm going to call this uh, DLG open just like that and there's a few things that we can change in the uh, DLG open and that's um, the filter so if you find the um, filter property what we're going to type here is JPEG and then OR or the pipe symbol star dot JPG and then OR again and maybe bitmap and hit the pipe symbol again and star dot bnp and pipe symbol again all files and all star dot star okay so the filter what you do is you um, let me just get to it somewhere where you can type filters have uh, the basic form of description, then the OR symbol, and um, maybe what we say search option, something like that, then the OR symbol and description, and the OR symbol and search option, so what we end up doing is typing some file description, then we go star dot and the extension of the file, then we type another one, and we hit OR and star dot EXT. So the first one that we've put in here is a JPEG. We want them to open um, image files first of all, so the extension for JPEG is JPG. And the other one that we added is, um, was it bitmap? And the extension for bitmap is BMP. And of course then we had all files. Just like that. Fair enough. And to say that we want the open dialog box to uh, begin with JPEG, we come back to our form and right click on your dialog box uh, it's here you'll see filter index probably just below filter if you've organized them alphabetically and this is one based it's not zero based so if you wanted it to uh, by default search for JPEGs you'd put in filter index one if you want by default it to search for uh, bitmaps you put in, in filter index two and of course all files would be uh, filter index three um, Windows is clever enough, or, or the CLR, the .NET, is clever enough to open up many image file types. I think we can do um, PNG or, you know, there's a whole bunch of file types, but um, we'll just initially specify JPEGs and bitmaps, and we'll have the filter index set to 1 so that it defaults to JPEGs. Okay. So that's our uh, dialog open box. Now if we click on our file menu and double click on open, it'll take us straight to the event of... Uh, when the user clicks on the open file menu item. Alright, what we want to do here is um, show them the dialog box and if they click OK uh, we want to load that image into the uh, picture and then we want to enable the trackbar. So this is how we do this. Um, if DLG what do we call it? Open it's a pointer show dialog equals system Okay, so when you show one of these dialog boxes, um, they return a dialog result to you. If the user's click to cancel, 
uh, we don't want to do anything so we're only interested in uh, going through to this block of code if they click OK and uh, they've opened a valid file alrighty it's important here to put this stuff in a, a try catch block because we're dealing with um, reading from a disk and you never know what's going to happen when you're reading from a disk maybe there'll be a, a power outage or the disk explodes you know anything could happen so we'll put it in a try catch block um, the dot 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 here in the catch just means uh, all exceptions and we'll just show a message this file could not be opened okay we're not going to go into details there but just the file can't be opened okay so what we're going to do is um, load the image that they selected into uh, a bitmap object so if we go right to the very top of our um, form.h file we'll find um, public ref class form1 and we want to add this bitmap as a um, variable to yeah, our form1 so bitmap it's a handle and we're going to call it BMP front. Um, we didn't go through exactly how the mechanics of this is going to work, but we're going to have um, bitmap front, which will be what's displayed here in the picture box, and we're going to have another uh, array of bytes, which we're actually going to be editing. So this one that we're going to make in this tutorial is called bitmap front. It's a handle, like we said, and it's bitmap. Okay, so scroll back down to the uh, where we were before, the try catch block in uh, open tool strip menu item click and we want to say bmp front equals um, we can cast here, you can use dynamic cast if you feel like it ok so we want, uh, we want to convert an image so image from file is what we're going to use to uh, actually open the image and we want to cast it to a bitmap and the name of the image file is what this uh, method takes so the name of the image file is whatever they selected in um, dlg open dot show dialog so dlg open file actually I don't know what I called it let's see dlg open file no just dlg open Okay, that should do it. So we've got um, image from file DLG open and whatever file name they selected. And now we want um, pick image. This is our picture box. Image equals BMP front. So that the picture box is showing whatever image they selected. Beautiful. And the other thing that we want to do, we can't forget, is that we want to enable the track bar. Now that the picture box is open, Okay, so track bar brightness enabled equals true. Let's hit F5 and see how we go. Oh, it's looking good. Okay, file, open. Good stuff. Um, where did I put this? Let's see, prog, and all those pictures for choot. Okay, here I've got three little pictures which I've set aside to open for this little activity. One here of a silly sleeping cat. Okay, it's looking pretty good. This one here of my dog that knocked down a mirror in a previous tutorial. Nice one, Leopold. And this is the biggest of them all. This is a, this is really quite a large image, just a picture of a kangaroo. Anyway, it's all looking pretty good. So that's our basic um, C++ front end. And uh, next shoot. Actually, let me see how much time we've got. Okay, so we're just shy of 20 minutes. So. Yeah, I might call that a toot there, and uh, we'll leave the rest for next time. And uh, thank you for listening.